So now we have a lot of data about NFTs and about the huge market of users and apps that actively uses them. How do we get at that data sensibly? How do we gain insights from that data that we can use? How do we make it easier for devs new to the space to use that data and build with it? Today, we're talking with Alex from Blockness, and we'll have him answer these questions and much more. Just a quick note, the Blockness are running a hackathon with our good friends at Polka Starter, and the link to that is down below in the description. You should take a look. But now, on with the show. Alex, can you give us quickly a rundown of what Blockness is and why our audience of blockchain and gaming enthusiasts should be interested? Thanks, thanks for the invite, Remy. And um, so, Blockness is a, um, a solution for uh, anyone building on top of blockchain. Um, so, any type of Web three product, uh, like you said, uh, gaming or uh, anything else basically that that requires some data that is in the blockchain so maybe the, the best way to explain it is to tell you a little bit of how it came to be and um, from that you, you'll get a, an idea of what it does sure. so um, beginning of this year um, I created the DAO with the idea of um, exploring the web3 space so i've been a, a speculator in, in in the blockchain space and just wanted to create some value learn and, and have fun um so we started to build so myself and a couple other builders uh, in the space started to to build a, a portfolio manager an nft portfolio manager um uh, and then also playing with the concept of a social network uh, on top of uh, so surrounding NFTs, so some some kind of uh, Instagram for NFTs. While doing that, we realized that infrastructure to build um, Web3 products was lacking. So every time you needed to build something, you needed to connect to the blockchain, retrieve data, uh, treat that data, uh, and then consume it. So you had to either maintain a node or connect to, to some um, node provider like Infura and then um, doing all of the data treatment and that takes a lot of time. So we decided, okay, let's let's try to solve this problem and, and um, make it in make it in a way that anyone can just connect to a simple API. So any web two developer can connect to a simple API. You don't need to understand how the blockchain uh works in detail um and you can just build a product so um what blockness does is we have our own nodes uh, we then index all of the blockchain data we start it in a, a normal database a transactional database um, and we expose the data through um, a very simple api that any developer would be able to consume um, so besides doing that, that we also enhance the data. So there are some data, uh, pertaining to NFTs that are not in the blockchain for, uh, as an example, um, the marketplaces like OpenSea, they have offer data. So, um, the, the stuff that, um, the listing data. So when you list something in OpenSea, any NFT, um, that is not on the blockchain. It should be. It should. And I think um, there are some projects working on that. It's actually what we do at Ultra. Nice, nice. And, and there are a couple more projects also doing that for uh, other spaces other than, than gaming. Um, uh, but currently, yeah, most of the liquidity um, so the, the main one being OpenSea, but all of the other big ones like looks rare and all of that stuff, they are all uh, private data. So we also retrieve that data and put it on top of the blockchain data. So when you are consuming um, Blockness API, you have all of this NS data ready for you. So an example would be, let's say you want to understand 
the volume for uh, board apes over the last month in uh, 15 minutes increments. So how the volume evolved uh, over the last month. So you can just, with one request to our to Blockness API, you can get all of that uh, to your side. Um, so yeah, we there are we are not the 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 single providers of a solution like that. There are other competitors in the space. Um, we just try to approach it in a way. So most of uh, these solutions try just to make it easy for developers. We try to also enhance the data, so to give you a little bit more to process some of the data in our side so that developers don't have to do it. Like you don't have to retrieve all of the transactions and then do the math on your side. We do some of that on, on Blockness side as well. Yeah, I was, I was gonna ask, cause we, we use Diffuse, which is you know pretty comparable to Infura on, uh, on Ethereum. And when you make a request for, you know for example, NFT data, you're getting back everything. You're not getting back kind of like what you want, you get back everything and then you have to go and process that data on your side and i know that especially if you're talking about um junior or mid-level developers it's a lot to ask from them um especially if you're talking about dumping them into the web3 space for the first time they don't really understand you know what's expected of them and then you go and you ask them to do the pull and all of the processing and I think the way that you guys are presenting it, where you're packaging uh, kind of what you expect people to uh, want to receive, that's really sensible. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's it's uh, exactly the way we, we see it. So we want to, we see Web3 currently is a bit limited on, I, I believe, so on the talent side. So. What I mean is you have a lot of these layer one developers like the, the polymaths, these, these, these big brains and working on scaling on, on new layer one alternatives that are or layer two scaling solutions that are um, um, adjusted for some particular use case. But we also need this, this um, volume of talent, like, the, like you said, juniors, the, the people that are uh, starting in web two. And if you make this learning curve uh, ultra steep, then no one will come and they will quit. So, um, so we try to do exactly that. So package the, the, the data in a way that makes sense for someone that is consuming. So you can just focus on building the features and not spending half of the development time, just manipulating data. Um, so one of the things we, we aim to do and with all of the, even with the hackathon is to hear about the needs of the developers. So, because we have some ideas because we are solving our own pains, um, but we want to hear from developers. So how should we structure the data? So what kind of endpoints do you do really, do you really, really want to, or need to, to develop your apps? Um, maybe to give you a, a, a deeper understanding of the way we are approaching the, the data problem. So we, we see it as a like a data lake where we have data stored in three different layers. So we have like the initial layer where it's just raw data. So we are just retrieving from the blockchain and storing directly in a database. Then we process that data and do some um, uh, simple um, denormalization of the data. So we, we, we make it uh, faster to retrieve. We, we connect stuff like uh, contracts with transactions and stuff like that. And then there's the last layer that we call the gold layer. And this is, is where we process data and um, make it, so store it in a way that makes sense for the people consuming it. Like an example are all of this um, uh, floor data and uh, volume and owners and all of that. So those metrics that people currently use but also it could be something like uh, tax data. So let's say you want to quickly retrieve tax data, tax data around a specific wallet. Again, in, instead of making the developer consume, like retrieve all of the transactions and then process all of the math, let's say we have an endpoint that is tailored for um, uh, US tax rules. So you just call um, the endpoint 
pass a specific wallet and we give you all of the data very well structured so that uh, you understand how much you have to pay uh, in terms of taxes for a particular year and um, where that value is coming from. So that's our idea. So, and, and we hope to keep doing this. So refining this gold layer and uh, catering to um, specific verticals. Uh, maybe we have some endpoints that are specific for uh, Web3 gaming or um, like, like I said, for, for uh, traders or for, um, um, you know, any, any use case you can think of. So that's, that's the way we are approaching it currently in, in this version of Blockness. I think that's a really interesting way to go about it. My, my question immediately is, of course, uh, whether the way that you're proposing to structure uh, the data that you're pr uh, pushing to developers would be uh, very uh, constricting to them. Because generally, you know, every developer thinks a little bit differently about every individual problem. And you ask 10 developers how to solve a problem and you're going to get 10 different answers, right? So I would imagine that you guys are also pr uh, pushing uh, very generalized data to uh, developers if they ask for it. Yes, so you, you still have the, the option to get the, the raw data, so the one closer to the what's stored in the, in the blockchain. So that, that will always be an option. Um, but um, yeah, the, the opinionated part will be there as well, and we see it as a, a differentiator uh, when you compare to, to other competitors doing the, a similar thing. So I know that you guys are running a hackathon with our good friends at Polka Starter, uh, with the requirement to leverage your APIs that expose, you know, this NFT data. And I wanted to ask some questions about your expectations for what people will go and build with your tech. With this hackathon, um, we want to do two things. So one is to, um, you know, show that you can build a little bit more than just. Um, um, the portfolio managers or, or the trading tools. So NFT is, uh, is a lot more than that. So um, the idea was to, to put this together to uh, see what people could do with uh, the data that is easy to retrieve um, and to also collect feedback as much as we can, right? So figure out what, what people need from us and, and then uh, iterate on that. So we expect to see ideas that have some sort of future, right? So not tech demos that, um, you know, you just do a hackathon and you drop it uh, the day after. Um, so stuff that you could look into uh, what comes out of this two days or three days of hackathon and you could see, okay, there's a potential product here if the team wants to move forward um, with it. So th that's our goal is just to, to push people to explore the space, focusing on the product side and not just so you give them the data so that they have time to think on, on the features to build on top. So that's our hope. Um, so we and myself particularly, so I'm, I'm a big believer in, in uh, decentralized ledger technology, so it's here to stay. Um, it will definitely be the, a big part of, uh, of our future. Um, I, like to I like to think it in a way that, so um, everything in our world or 99% of the stuff in our world uh, is uh, non-fungible, right? So our houses are non-fungible, our cars are non-fungible, um, you know, e everything. So there's only a couple of fungible things um, that are like financial instruments. Um, if you think about that and you think you join that with the, the fact that we are spending most of our lives online um, and the, as a, uh, the third step, you think that we love to flex, right? We love to display what we own, um, to show to other people what we have. Um, if you join these three things, you can see that 
there's no way in our future um, that most things won't be tokenized. So if you if if that's true and if you believe this, then there's like infinite possibilities of what you can do with NFTs. So we have the the, the gaming space that you know a, a lot better than me and the, the potential is immense. Um, you have all of the art and collectibles that so that's the current use case and uh, a great use case that's bringing a lot of people into um, into the NFTs and in, onboarding them into into the blockchain space. Um, but there are other promises that um, they are taking some time to 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 come uh, and be implemented. Um, some of them are like. Uh, the ticketing industry so it's a perfect match like uh, to have nfts tickets as nfts right so um, you have all of the secondary market you can enable you have the, the um, you can um, comp fight the, the the scalping or eliminate it completely so that's the ticketing um, side but then there's all of these um, uh, more bureaucratic process we have today, like uh, um, all of the process that involves changing uh, owners of a house, all of that can be done through uh, the blockchain using NFTs. And we see some developments starting, um, but it's taking time, right? So I, I would hope that we would be progressing faster. Um, and you have stuff like, um, like even CVs, right? You, you could be um, your CV could be a soul bound NFT sitting in your wallet. Um, you you could like be learning to do these online courses and it would update your NFT. Um, well, what we're what we're really talking about then is like a person's identity. That's actually something that I think about a lot that, you know, when we talk about things like uh, healthcare and governmental services, which include, you know, uh, your ID, your history, your state, your status, your ownership, like all of that really should be publicly owned, publicly managed, publicly available. Um, I'm sure that there's a lot of privacy concerns, but that stuff uh has solutions for it built in through cryptographic means. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that I think that our world would benefit from uh, having much more open, simple ways to uh, manage and use our our data than, frankly, the super closed, super complex, super fragile, old bureaucratic systems that we're using today. Yeah, and, and uh, to add to that, like the, the interoperability. So I don't know exactly yeah. how it is in the US, but in, in, in Portugal, it's a mess, right? So the the, um, the different state organizations, they don't communicate between them. So the data is not passed between them. Right. So it's it's all a big mess. And, and right. you can see how that could be solved very easily uh, with blockchain tech. Like you said, privacy is still uh, um, a barrier. The technology is here, but I guess um, as, as we've seen over the last couple of months, the the regulatory hurdle um, increases as you move towards the the, the more private uh, um, blockchains, right? So um, one of the big arguments you have when discussing uh, regulation around this is the transparency, right? And um, when you start to to get into uh, privacy preserving blockchains, you know, regulators don't like it that much. Uh, there are solutions for that, but um, I guess we, we, we need to play with them a little bit more and gain trust on them. But um, so we, I believe we should start with, um, so maybe healthcare is not the, the the next use case we should tackle, you know, because it's tough with the, the health records um, not being uh, um, completely private or um, so maybe we, we need to play a little bit more with other use cases that are simple, but um, 
but yeah, that's definitely in in our future. Um, I've I've worked in healthcare for um, some time, and in, including uh, solutions for the the US market, and you know, it's one of those spaces where the incumbent incumbents are so large that it's it's very hard to move the needle. You know, um, like I was speaking with about ticketing, and it's the same thing. So technology is here, solutions are here. Now the next hurdle is about um, you know, pushing a little away these big dinosaurs uh, so that we can have some innovation in the space. Um, and that's, that's the, the next hurdle. Ideally or, or optimistically, by providing the infrastructure and making it easy for developers to, to, to keep prototyping fast and putting products in the market, we can start demonstrating even for these uh, big dinosaurs, that the technology is here, uh, they can start adopting it, they can start buying some of these smaller startups that uh, are pushing this tech, and we, we, we make the adoption faster. We make the penetration of the technology um, happen uh, in a more easy way, you know? Um, so, yeah, that, that's the hope. But definitely the tech is here. When, when we were talking before about, you know, onboarding junior and mid-level developers, especially from the Web 2 space into the Web 3 space, I think that this is this is really the point that there has to be that kind of like transition zone, which makes sure that uh, those people acquire that knowledge and then use it to develop products. And when you talk about, you know, aqua hires from, you know, one startup that builds a product, maybe it's not so successful, but then a larger play in the market sees that these people, they built a team, they built a product, um, they acquired the necessary knowledge, and now uh, they're functionally useful as a unit within the context of a larger vision. And I think that there's a lot of value for the current stage that we're in in the market, which I still consider very nascent to build a lot of uh, those types of, you know, like smaller level products that provide uh, minimum levels of value that prove the technology, but more moreover, they allow for developers to acquire that basic knowledge so that they can continue in the market in the future. Yeah, completely agree. So uh, when I was uh, telling you earlier that um, uh, I created this DAO and uh, it works like a builder studio and the idea was to so i have i have about 20 years of experience in in the tech space uh, all web too so i started in, in the beginning of the the internet and then went over uh, all of the transitions so when i started this uh, i was a bit naive and thought okay i have plenty of developers in my network um, that uh, like to work with me so uh, let's create a space where they can start playing with web3 and, and learn and have fun so on board all of these guys and um yeah the, the the barriers were not as easy as i thought so um people were playing but then it's too it was too hard so too much to learn on the side you know people had their uh, main full-time jobs that that they needed to 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 deal with so yeah removing that that initial barrier and and helping people come in fast, those juniors, those Web2 guys, build this uh, um, initial proof of concepts and, and start to see some of these exits. Um, so that, that's, that's all about what, we, what I focused on and, and uh, trying to help. Um, and in the end, it's, it's like you said, it's about pushing the, the space forward and, and enabling adoption. Um, because we have plenty of people focused on the scaling issues, on the speed issues. We now need the use cases. We need um, we need to prove that it's it's a lot more than speculation. It's it's about the usefulness of the technology to solve real world problems. And um, and yeah, for that we need more developers in, um, and we need to show these larger larger companies that uh, the technology is worth it so they can invest in it they can hire people that know how to how to build it alex listen uh i think that our time is up but i wanted to thank you for your time and your expertise 
For anybody that's listening, I'll make sure to post a link to the uh, Blockness and Polka Starter hackathon in the description below. Thanks again. Thank you, Rami. It was a big pleasure to be here and, and to be able to speak a little bit about uh, how I approach this space and what I think about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>